For as long as I remember, I have been counting every single calorie my body burns up and matching it perfectly against every single calorie that ends up in my bloodstream after a meal. That is the only way to maintain a healthy weight. Well, when I say I've been doing it, I really mean that deep in my brain, my hypothalamus has been doing it. Yes, we all have a subconscious weight control system that is extremely good at matching energy expenditure with energy intake. And the great news is your weight control system wants you to be slim. Carrying around too much extra fat is not going to make you good at hunting or gathering, and that is not going to help you survive in the natural world. To keep you at a healthy weight, your hypothalamus needs to know how much fat you have stored, which it does by monitoring the hormone leptin. Leptin is produced by fat cells, and the amount of leptin in your bloodstream correlates to the amount of body fat you have. Overeat and gain a bit of body fat? No worries, because your hypothalamus can sense the increased leptin levels and can coordinate a decrease in appetite and an increase in metabolic rate so that you lose the excess fat without conscious effort. That is why staying lean should be easy. Because your weight control system can reduce your appetite, you can lose weight while still eating until you feel full. Amazing! but clearly not the experience of most people now. The reason most people do not have this experience when they gain excess fat is probably because of something called leptin resistance. Despite increasing fat stores and therefore increasing leptin levels, the hypothalamus may not be sensing leptin properly. With leptin resistance, the hypothalamus may perceive leptin to be low and therefore that you are in a famine. So it ramps up appetite and slows metabolism even as you continue to gain weight. If you then try to restrict calories in order to lose weight, your body just thinks the famine is getting even worse and the situation continues to spiral. But if you can get rid of leptin resistance, your hypothalamus will suddenly sense your excess fat stores, put the brakes on your appetite and increase your metabolism, resulting in fat loss which leads to the crucial question of what causes leptin resistance. Leptin resistance is thought to be caused by inflammation and insulin resistance, and both of those are caused by eating overly processed modern foods. Calories in versus calories out is correct. If you want to lose weight, you need to use up more calories than you take in. But don't try and figure that equation out yourself. Leave it to your weight control systems. Your job is simply to allow your hypothalamus to sense leptin levels properly again by avoiding overly processed foods. We all need our primary focus to be on quality rather than quantity. Make sure most of the food you buy and consume is unprocessed, like you would find in nature, such as vegetables, fresh fish, eggs, whole fruit, nuts and seeds, and so on. These foods are unprocessed and should not need an ingredients list. Beyond that, try to stick to processing that people have done for thousands of years, which usually involves fermentation, such as fermenting milk into kefir and cheese, or vegetables into sauerkraut and kimchi, or grinding whole grains into flour and then fermenting them into sourdough bread. The more you can do these processing steps yourself at home, the better. For anything more processed than this, I check the ingredients list and avoid anything with any of the following listed. Oil, the exception being extra virgin olive oil, sugar or any other sweetening product at all, and flour, unless it's 100% whole grain. And if you are after sourdough bread, make sure that yeast does not appear on the ingredients label. And perhaps most crucially, any non-food ingredients, including anything you don't recognize or anything that you wouldn't buy to put in your own cooking. That includes sweeteners, preservatives, e-numbers, emulsifiers, and flavoring, including those labeled as natural. I've found that avoiding foods with any of these on the ingredients label minimizes the vast majority of overly processed foods, and that means minimizing the foods that drive insulin resistance, inflammation, and leptin resistance. 
Overly processed foods often focus on a combination of fat and carbohydrate and tend to be lacking in fiber, protein, and micronutrients. Fiber helps reduce insulin resistance. And there is an idea called the protein leverage hypothesis, which suggests that you will keep feeling hungry until your body has had enough protein, even if that means you overconsume calories. And it's not too hard to imagine there may be a similar effect at play with micronutrients, whereby your body keeps you feeling hungry even when you have had enough calories in an attempt to obtain the micronutrients it needs. Focusing your meals around micronutrient-dense whole foods that include plenty of protein and fiber will help with all that, though of course may not give you that dopamine hit you're looking for. Another pitfall for proper weight regulation. Eating comfort foods for a dopamine hit can lead you to completely ignore the signals your brain and stomach are telling you that you've had plenty of calories. Any food you know that does this to you, don't have it in the house or have it in very limited quantities. Another key tool to help with fat loss and weight regulation is time-restricted eating, where every day you have at least a 12-hour fast overnight without any food or drink other than water. Within the remaining time, your eating window, have two to three meals and do not snack in between. Going without snacks should feel easy if you've had plenty of fiber and protein at your meals. Time-restricted eating can help reduce insulin resistance, give your gut the proper break it needs overnight, and limit opportunities to seek out those dopamine foods, as well as limiting alcohol intake, another good step since excess alcohol can also contribute to both insulin resistance and inflammation. Cleaning your teeth soon after finishing your final meal of the day will help train you to avoid late evening snacks and alcohol. Although nutrition is the primary focus when it comes to maintaining a healthy weight, a lack of physical activity each day, poor sleep and stress often contribute to both inflammation and insulin resistance. And so these are things that do need addressing too. I've done videos on sleep and stress, which are linked in the description, and some videos on exercise are coming up, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see those. Just bear in mind, your body may not want you to be bodybuilder shredded, but equally, it won't want you lugging around a load of extra fat that interferes with your ability to move naturally and keep active throughout your whole day with ease. So cut out the processed junk, give yourself a proper fast overnight, allow your hypothalamus to sense leptin levels properly again, and your weight control systems will naturally bring you back down to a healthy weight and then keep you there effortlessly. I've linked my book in the description if you want all this fleshed out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.